a good enough camera angle to see everything because this is certainly a little bit of a big tent, but let's jump into it. So if you understand or if you've been around the channel for any length or time at all, you'll know that I'm generally not a fan of tents when it comes to bushcrafting. I'm much more of a fan of going in with with equipment and building your own uh, shelter, whatever that may be. However, over the years, you know, I get a lot of messages from people asking, you know, what type of tent would be good for bushcrafting. Now, like I said, I'm generally not a fan of bring in or brought shelters. I like built shelters more. However, for an affordable cost, I think that the Alps, Alps Mountaineering Trail TP2 is probably the best shelter for a one-person bushcrafter who's looking to have a reasonably robust and lightweight, extremely versatile tent that will allow them to do bushcrafting and maybe even be a tent that they can spend time in while they're building their shelter. So let's talk about why I think that this tent is a good bushcrafting tent. Okay. So the first reason why I think this tent is a great option for bushcrafters is, like I said, its versatility is really high. And like I said, for a single person that is going out, I would rate this, they call this a two-person tent, but I would personally rate this at more of like a one and three quarters person tent, where in my personal mind, at least being 6'2 and using this tent, you know, I can fit myself, I can fit my dog, and I can fit all my bushcrafting equipment. And that is the original and still the reason why I'm drawn to this shelter. It has plenty of space for me to bring my backpack, my, you know, 30 inch saw, my pack axe, a hatchet, you know, all the equipment that I use and that I need for doing bushcrafting tasks out in the wilderness. I can bring it all in the tent, plus I can have, you know, my sleeping bag, a mattress, an air mattress in there, and I can have myself, like I said, I can even have a dog if I so choose. There is plenty of room inside the tent. And then you have a forward vestibule Vest you have a forward vestibule and that allows you to have even more room should you choose. Now in this current setup, because it's a pretty warm summer day, I have the tent, you know, as you can see, all the way open. Well, maybe not all the way, but I have one vestibule or one side of the vestibule peeled back and hung up on the side of the teepee to let lots of air in to uh, not only help you guys, you know, be able to see inside the tent, uh, trail teepee, but also to keep it reasonably cool. Now, of course, I don't have any equipment in it yet, but I'm trying to uh, show you guys, you know, the ground space and what you can, what you have to work with. So, uh, as you can see, though, it has plenty of versatility and, like I said, a lot of ground space. In addition to this, though, the other part that I like about this, being that this is an ultralight tent, it is pretty lightweight, coming in at like three pounds-ish, and it also compacts down really small. Uh, I have yet to, but I will probably roll in some footage of this thing packed down. But even if you guys saw when I was initially opening this little guy up, you know, this thing is fairly small. It compacts down for a two-person tent into smaller than a one-person tent. However, that does get to one of the either items you'll see as a pro or a con. And I did mention it's an ultralight tent, and that means that this tent is actually designed to work with trekking poles. Now, as you can see, and being a bushcrafter, I don't carry trekking poles. I don't even own trekking poles. I think trekking poles are kind of lame in my opinion. However, when you come out here into the woods as a bushcrafter, if you are already anticipating bringing, you know, a hatchet, saw, a knife, you know, those types of pieces of equipment, you can fairly readily and fairly easily fashion a ridge pole like I did here that will work in place of a hiking pole and it only needs to be about 51 inches long so it doesn't have to be particularly tall so you can fashion it fairly easy and like I said that's what you guys can see here you know nothing too fancy or special but it is now you know ready to go and 
yeah. Now, like I said, that is a bit of a con being that there is an extra setup time that you have to incorporate or keep be mindful of that you are not necessarily going to hike in with a standalone shelter. This is a shelter that, like I said, you have to, um, you're going to have to build a ridge pole for or craft a ridge pole for. But so long as you're able to do that and it is very easy, it allows you to hike in with a shelter that is very small uh, as a pack in weight and size and then set up a shelter that has a good amount of floor space for you to put all your gear and equipment. The other thing I personally like about having the ridge pole as a thing that you have to build is it still kind of keeps you in mind and in tune of building your shelter. This isn't something that you know you just one and done. You bring in all the stuff, you plug all the poles together, and you know it's just all up by itself. This is something that you still have to, in a light way, very light way, build your shelter just a little bit. So I do enjoy that kind of bushcrafting aspect because when I come out to bushcraft, I like to build, I like to make things. So even if it is just the ridge pole of my shelter, I'm still making my shelter and I like that, that little bit of involvement that I have to do. And I honestly think it gives this tent a little bit more character, having a real piece of wood as the ridge pole, as opposed to, you know, having just all this aluminum stuff. So anyways, that's a personal opinion, but I do like that aspect. So those are the primary things that I do enjoy about this uh, Trail TP2. I do think that, like I said, it has plenty of floor space. The one downside I have noticed is, while I still think that this is an excellent shelter for Alaska and for bushcrafting, you do have to be mindful that it does not work the best in rocky conditions because, as you guys can see, this thing requires about six to seven tent pegs to set up, and they are included with the shelter, but um, you do have to have them. Like I said, this is not a freestanding shelter, so you do have to have, you know, pretty much all six tent pegs in or else the shelter's really not going to work. So that is a downside. But once again, in different areas of Alaska, this shelter isn't the best. But in areas like we're in right now, in the true boreal forest region, which is most of central Alaska, you know, this thing works absolutely beautifully in the ground. And like you can see here, it doesn't take that long to set up at all. Okay, guys. So that's basically all I have to say about this little Trail TP2. I will also note, uh, though I have not experimented or tried it at all, there is also a loop on the top of the tent. So for whatever reason, if you don't think or you don't want to, you know, craft your own ridge pole. In fact, in this type of situation that I'm looking at right now, over the trail TP, it would actually work but uh, you there's a loop on the top at the very center point of the trail TP that is put there on purpose so that you could potentially run a ridge line uh, up above the trail TP and use line and as opposed to a solid ridge pole you could just use a solid ridge line so like I said I haven't tried that out though I would imagine so long as you properly stake out your ends that would work just fine however I think that the ridge pole thing is easy enough and once again in some situations where you don't have you know a tree conveniently over your shelter you may have to just branch out and make your own ridge pole which really doesn't take that long at all especially if you have a saw a knife and an axe it really takes just about five minutes so anyways guys there this shelter is very versatile it comes with a lot of ways to set up the shelter you know in different like there's different ways to set up the shelter. Each and every one of the uh, stakeout points has its own kind of lines that you can adjust the tension on. So whenever you set up the shelter, if it's too tight or too loose, you can just cinch it right down or loosen it right up and get it to the preferred uh, length or sorry, tightness that you need. Uh, as far as this shelter goes in performance with wet, conditions or rainy conditions it is not the best performer i think like most tents you know given enough time and enough downfall of water it will certainly uh, get wet and i left this thing out in non-stop rain for about two days and it was about 90 percent dry on the inside there was a little bit of pooling but nothing that 
is too severe and I was still able to camp in this thing and stay dry even with the minor amount of pooling and like I said it really wasn't that big of a deal for me however once again it is not completely waterproof it does have a water protective barrier on the outer materials so it will repel water to an extent but like I said if you leave it out in enough rain for a long enough time it will pool in on the inside and you will probably get wet at some point however you'll be hard pressed to find a tent that isn't that way or you know to find a shelter system that won't get wet in the rain so anyways guys that's basically all i have to say about the alps mountaineering trail tp2 i use it it is my go-to for bushcrafting tents once again it's not my favorite type of bushcrafting but if you're just going out and you just want a simple tent instead of building your own shelter or you want a you know shelter that you can live in while you're building a primary shelter for bushcraft this is a really solid option especially for a single person and i would highly recommend you guys take a look at it they're also not that expensive coming in at around 120 to 100 dollars and the last part that i would say that i like about it is the color scheme is a little bit more subdued as opposed to alps mountaineering's uh more normal color scheme which is a brown and orange i find the orange to be even though it's a burnt orange still a little bit overpowering especially for if i'm going out and i don't want to make you know a statement with my tent i just want you know neutral colors this kind of beige white almost grayish and blue uh, really work well because they don't stand out in the woods granted they also don't blend in either but you could also change that as well so anyways guys that's basically all i have to say about this uh, alps mountaineering trail tp2 it's a solid tent and uh, i do enjoy using it and i think it offers different pers a different perspective and different options for bushcrafting uh, in the summer and in three seasons so yeah that's all I have to say, guys. As always, God bless, and I'm out.